you piece of crap. 216-578-1007 or 1-800-348-1007. Three five one nine two. Want to send a text? People are starting to come around to why Mary's so mad today after she said she paid eight bucks for a cup of fruit. I'm not mad. It's New York, though. I thought I'm that sounded mad. cheap, actually. For that a thing of cheap. fruit, yeah. A, for a, a thing of berries. Yeah, berries are right. Expensive. Yeah. And they're always good quality. That's why I like going there. I was gonna say, I think you'd pay twice that for a thing of fruit. Good on you. I'm not even in that bad of a mood today. Huh. I'm just feeling feisty. I know the difference between feisty and... Whatever. Then tell me how I'm feeling, Alan. Mansplain me how I'm feeling today. No, I'm telling you how you've, how you've said you are <clears throat> today. You're like, I don't... I, what? I, who cares? That's not feisty. What you're, what you're giving off. What you're projecting. Yeah. I know feisty. I like feisty. I married feisty. I even like the artist feist. I saw her live, and her performance was quite feisty. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're not required to be a certain way. But, you know, yeah. don't talk to me like I'm five. I didn't talk. When did I'm talk just to you fi- like I'm five? not mad. I'm just feisty. I'm not mad. I'm really not in a bad mood today. I don't feel great. So I feel like maybe I just have a little bit of a shorter fuse today. Oh, short fuse. Okay. Well, I understand that. Mary, just let us tell, your, tell, uh, tell you how you're feeling. That, I asked you to. Yeah. No, I'm not I trying to tell. I'm not telling you how you feel. I'm saying that feisty ain't nailing it. Yeah, you are. Okay, so we've talked about people on OnlyFans and what they do and how far they go and what you need to do to see a pretty good return on your investment. Now, that all changes when you're already famous. <clears throat> Remember who Drea De Matteo is? Yeah. No. She was on The Sopranos. She was also on um, Matt LeBlanc's friend spinoff. Joey, she was Adriana on The Sopranos. And she's around my age, I think. Yeah, she's like 51 or 52. There you go. And she's on OnlyFans. And she said she made enough on OnlyFans in five minutes to pay off her mortgage. She was on Sons of Anarchy back in the day. Too. You, Mary, you liked Sons of Anarchy. I loved Sons of Anarchy. And you watched <laughs> Sopranos. You know What's who right? she is. Yeah. Drea De Matteo. She was uh, Christopher's girlfriend. Yeah. In real oh, life. yeah. She's Jax's wife, ex-wife. Yeah. Right. That's right. Um, and in real life, that's totally her type. Like, she's married to what's his name? Shooter Jennings or one of those guys. She really likes those, like, biker-type dudes, right? How did she only have $10? This USA Today, Drea De Matteo says OnlyFans saved her when she only had $10. Because she, what, where is she working? Well, here's why. I'll tell you why. Because she didn't want to get the vaccine. So she was losing work because she didn't want to get the COVID vaccine. Now, I don't know if she went and started screaming MAGA, woke, whatever, like Gina Carano. But Drea De Mateo was not doing the things she wanted to do. So she said OnlyFans, she made enough money in five minutes. Now, mind you, she doesn't get naked on OnlyFans. So this is a 52-year-old woman kicking it. Now, she's in great shape. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying she's not some 22-year-old TikToker. She's on OnlyFans in, like, black leather bustiers and making tons of money. Now, I would imagine something like this. Do you interact with people on OnlyFans? Like, you live? You're you supposed to. Yeah, they can do that. Okay. They, they can they go live. They have to pay for it, though. Yeah, well, yeah. Right, so she's like... Hey, got any, I would imagine, have any Sopranos questions? Hey, do you have any Joey questions? Sons of Anarchy, yeah. (laughs) For the 10 of you who watch Joey, do any of you have questions? And, of course, she probably had to kick up half to Sylvia. So she's making a lot of money. And good for her, because I think she's super foxy. But for somebody who's not getting naked on OnlyFans, and you do see that a lot. Because they want to get paid extra for the Nike stuff, right? Is that how it works? Hey, you got to hit me up. Well, give I mean, me this some much. Some just don't get naked on there. They'll do like suggestive stuff, but they won't get fully naked. Okay, there's people like that. Well, she's one of them. Mm-hmm. And good for her. She made yes. a ton of money. Yep. 
After turning down the COVID-19 jab, a decision that made it tricky to find work in Hollywood, the actress found herself with just $10 in her bank account. $10. Wouldn't you get on OnlyFans before you had just $10 in your account? Doesn't sound as dramatic if you got $17. <laughs> $10 is where it really hits people in the heart. I guess so. Mm-hmm. I can barely buy a cup of fruit in New York with that money. Right. Wow. Or a haircut. <laughs> or a haircut. You ain't going to get no $10 haircut. What can you reasonably get, Mary? I'm listening. In New York right now mm-hmm. for $10. Don't say a slice. Well, you can get a slice. Yeah. You can get um you get probably two slices. At well, least. at the diner right next door, you can get a salad or a wrap for 8.99, but you okay. can't do anything fancy to it and right. no side. But you could get you could get a salad, a small salad or a basic wrap for yep. $10. You could get a cup of fruit. Enough to put you something get, in your belly. Yeah, I mean there's a lot of like grab and go markets that'll have like a cup of yogurt or overnight oats yeah. or something like that. Like you could get a meal that you can stretch into two meals. Okay. For ten bucks. Gotcha. I just always think of like all that kind of stuff being like just twenty bucks. It's not though. Off the top. Okay. You just gotta find the right places to go. Because the first day that I got here and worked at the radio, I just stopped at the first like, oh, they had salads. I saw that they were advertising salads, right? And I walked in and I got a like twenty two dollar salad, and right. I'm like, this, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna have to move home in six months if this is how this is. <laughs> but then like, you know, you're there a little longer, you're going to the same place, and you're like, okay, let me try this diner tomorrow. Let me go into this place on the way out, and you'll find the places that have good deals. Hey, did you guys hear Mary's back home? Oh my god, what happened? Twenty two dollar salads. Mm-hmm. There's nothing I could do about they it. They carved yeah. her out like a Thanksgiving bird. But she looks great. <laughs> Does she? Oh, she I dropped a bunch. I'm down like 13 pounds. Oh, are you really? Oh, good yeah. for you. I posted a picture on Instagram <clears throat> from my Don't Tell special. I wore the same outfit the other day, and uh, my pants were like baggy. And I'm like, damn, Mary, look at me going. That's from moving to New York. You're down that since moving. Uh, you attribute it to pretty that? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, I was. I posted another picture a while ago. They're all up on my Instagram. Um, I posted another one a while ago. Where I I lost ten pounds in one month. Like it was December, the end of December. I had a doctor's appointment and I weighed a hundred and forty nine pounds. I think. Yeah. And then here it was like one thirty six. So I mean, from the end of December to the end. How of many January, steps a day are you getting usually in New York? Um, it depends on what I'm doing. If I'm just coming to work, I'll probably get like eight or nine thousand. But if I'm doing shows and stuff, it's closer to like thirteen. So just like on a day when you don't have a lot to do, you're getting when I, on a day 10, when I don't have yeah. a lot to do, I'm getting eight thousand steps. Yeah. That's awesome. The, the train is almost a mile away. It's like a seventeen minute walk to the train. So that's thirty five minutes of cardio every single day. Yep. That's great. Yeah. Did you guys get all that rain blowing through? It rained for like two days straight. Yeah, okay. Uh not yesterday, but the day before. It rained um, overnight, all day, and then into overnight again. Christina from the West Side Pound Cake says that her cousin lives in Miami, and he went on a gay cruise for his 50th birthday. Ironically, the uh, the Virgin Cruise. <laughs> so maybe look into that. I, was gonna, I, I didn't know if there was more to the story. Like, he went on a cruise for his birthday and just and, didn't come back. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, she said it looked. the ship looked aw- insane and... No, I, I had a no, great time. I have no doubt that it's insane. Like, I honestly think a- after I would go on something like that, I'd probably have to take a four to six week gay cleanse. Like, I don't think I would be gay uh, for four to six weeks. No. <laughs> you would be, be gay. Straight. Right? Yeah. Like, I, I would be. I'd be over gay. You'd people. be so over. You'd be OG. You'd be so overloaded. Yeah, I'd, I'd be regular. Like, I'm like, all right, I got all the gay out of me this weekend. I, I'm, I'm good for four to six weeks. Wow. How do you land on four to six weeks? I don't know, but I feel like that's a good cleansing period. Yep. They, they usually say four <laughs> to six weeks to start a new medication, mm-hmm. or to develop get some, a habit, you know, get something out of your system. Four to six weeks. I thought so. it took. I thought it took twenty-one days to develop a new habit, or is that something somebody made up? I don't know. made up. You know, the, I was gonna say these things kind of work their way into common knowledge, Some but they people, all sound all made it takes up. Takes one puff. Oh, <laughs> I learned it from watching you, Dad. Mm-hmm. By the way, with all due respect, and I do love the drag community, 
And you're never going to top Pound Cake's drag name, which is what? A wish a bitch would. A wish a bitch would. So a buddy of mine sends me this. He works in the Loop downtown in Chicago. And the Walnut Room is a very hoity-toity joint there at the Macy's flagship store on State Street in Chicago. And the Walnut Room has Beyonce-themed drag show coming up. And for, huh, so where they, they, they have food and there's drinks and the dancers are doing sets and it's a lot of fun. <clears throat> and a lot of people go. And the show is emceed by Chicago drag icon Lucy Stool. Uh, stop. Now, Lucy Stool is very funny. <laughs> now, here's what I'm saying. Um, I think oh. I think people who freak out, and you notice kind of people freaking about their kids with dragged story hour, that's all kind of gone away because those right-wing nut jobs have moved on to their next abomination or whatever. But I understand if you might not want your kid to be introduced to Lucy Stool. Because that's like clever, but in a really gross way. And it has a very specific meaning. Um... So I'm like, I don't, I don't know. If this is probably not, not geared toward families, but that would be a situation where I could understand where somebody go, I don't know that I want to take my kid to see Lucy's stool. Ah, hmm. uh, that is up there with a wish a bitch would though. That is up there. The upcoming brunch is going to be Beyonce, Taylor Swift, and Bad Bunny themed. The tickets alone are 20 bucks. That doesn't even include brunch. Dude, drag and you got to tip the dancers. I'm kind of pissed that drag has gone mainstream because that means everything's more expensive now. Like, it, it used to be just gay bars would, would host well, Blame it. RuPaul. Don't blame them. That's what I'm saying is, like, our culture has now, like, it, it's, it's a part of pop culture. And so... Isn't that what you want? Don't you want more mainstream no, acceptance? it's more expensive. Like, drag brunch just used to oh, be at gay bars. I see. And now, everywhere you go, oh, we offer a drag brunch. Okay, but it's a $20 cover. Like, you guys are doing cover? I didn't even order anything yet. You're like, yeah, well, we gotta pay the drag queens. I'm like, that's not how they do it at the gay <laughs> bars. This used to be the only place they were able to work, so we could just pay them what we, need, what we so wanted. The, yeah. People's success is making you upset. Because it's costing him more. Mm-hmm. <sighs> He wants people to thrive, just not in a way that cuts into his bottom line. Well, I got to pay. Come here, do a drag show, go under the name New York Fruit Cup, and charge $10. <laughs> yeah. And you'll be there. I mean. If I wasn't a wish a bitch, it would have been Anita LaCroix. <laughs> That's probably taken. Is it? I mean, probably. I feel like most, I feel like drag names are like roller derby names. Even if you come up with a really good one, somebody probably already came up with it before you. Doesn't make it less funny. Just means you're not going to have it to yourself. Or like podcast names. They're like, oh, I got a great name for a podcast. And then you look it up, and there's 47 versions of it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I know. I, I was clicking around. There's five there other Bill Squire shows. What? There's one person, but I, I don't think she's a drag queen. Her name is actually Anita, and it's LaCroix. <laughs> She's not a drag queen. That's, yeah, Anita LaCroix. Mm. And plus, La- LaCroix is kind of out of style now. That was like peak 2018, 2019. Well, but you could take the name Anita and find a million suggestive terms that you could potentially put with it. Anita Menthol? Amanda Hug and Kiss. I mean, that's a classic, right? It's not a drag name. It's a classic it's Simpsons, Simpsons joke. Yeah. yeah. But um, Anita Wiener, how about that? Mm, too cliche. <laughs> no, I know it's not. It's low hanging fruit. But um, anyway, you're mad that drag is like a big deal now. Yeah, but you know what? I think you can take solace in the fact that the bigger things get, they tend to go away, and they'll. It's cyclical. So it won't be that big for that long. That's why they're kind of trying to strike while the iron's hot, I think. Yeah, these drag queens all... And you're trying to be a patron of the arts, by the way. You wanted us all to come out and see your thing. I wanted and you your were, money. And uh, that's what I'm saying, <laughs> and we were happy to do it. But that was one and done. 
These are people who have to get talked and strapped every oh, day yes. to I do this. I have respect for drag queens. I oh, didn't know my it God. involved all that. My, uh, my uh, drag mentor was like, okay, you need to shave. So I shaved, and he's like, ugh, you're such an amateur. Yeah, I told you to shave. I was like, Drag I- woman tour, pound cake. Malibu, Peru. Um, and I shaved, and she was like, no, there's not good enough. So she had to, like, put a layer of makeup on me to cover up my 5 o'clock shadow. I was like, I literally shaved this afternoon. I don't know what more you want. I got hairs. Yeah. Pound cake has hairs. Anita doesn't have hairs. Or a wisha. wisha. A wisha, bitchwood, does not have hairs. Anita LaCroix doesn't have Lucy Stool has hairs. Ugh. I want to know what names uh, she went through before she landed on that. She goes, mm, I don't know. You know, I want to have a broad appeal. And uh, I'm sure broad appeal is a good drag name. Broad appeal? <laughs> <laughs> broad appeal. I'm broad appeal. That's a good one. Because back in the day, there were a lot of, like, female punk artists that would have, like, drag. They were kind of all part of that that performance art community. So like Sharon Needles or Head of Lettuce or things like Sharon that. Sharon Needles. You yeah. never heard Sharon Needles? No. Oh, that's, that's a classic. God, yeah. where's Carrie Nichols? That used to be my favorite drag queen at Bounce. What about Damn Britta it. Filter? Might get sued for that. <laughs> Britta Filter. Aurora Borealis? <laughs> Crystal Decanter? Pheromone? Pheromone. Ah, there you go. Penetration. Ew. <laughs> uh, oh, here's a good one. Rue Paul. Nah, that's not going to get anybody anywhere. Never from the Bible. <laughs> oh, okay. I want to come on you. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's Russian. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that was a that's a Russian one. Oh my goodness. That, I, I wasn't I have... drinking anything, but I still kind of did a spit take on that one. <laughs> ah. Mimi, I'm first. How about that one, Pound Ooh, Cake? I love that one. There you go. Mimi, I'm first. That's Me cute. first in the gimme gimmies. Oh. Okay. Listen, Pound Cake can call drag culture his culture, even though he is not an active, even though he did it one time. She's dead. I wish a bitch would dead. Right. She died. Yep. She did. Be like me calling snowboarding culture my culture I just, after I did it one time. I love a drag brunch and a kiki, and I don't want to have to pay more for for what was already ours that you people took from us. Always taken. Yeah, but people were always paying to see a show. They weren't putting on free drag shows back in the 70s we and 80s. Were tipping. It wasn't a cover at the door. It well, was like, there were plenty of places that where you were paying to get in. No, well, not my place. I would walk in. They were like, give you a mimosa. You get some light finger food. And then, <laughs> some light touching? <laughs> some light finger food. And then the drag queens would come by. And then you tip as you go. Yeah. Everyone, $20, $30 here. And then you, you tip. Sharon Peters. It's kind of old school. I'm going to break. If you um, want to send the last word, do it by text, 35192, to get me there. You got the Corey Roddick experience, by the way, on the way. No calves tonight. So 630, you're going to have Corey tonight here on The Buzzard. It's the Alan Cox Show. Everywhere on our free iHeart. 